this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about the biggest problem with using an app builder platform. Okay, so today I want to answer a question that came in the other day from How You Doing? That's an awesome name. He says, Hi Eric, thanks for making such great videos. We are a small community, but it's still great. I agree. Question, I do not know how to program, but I'm making great static and utility apps with Thunkable and Makeroid. I am getting thousands of downloads on my apps and making a good amount of money. Is it possible to continue working like this without knowing programming? How you doing? That's a good question. You know what, if you're making money, you keep, keep at it, keep doing it. Here's one of the th things that scares me about using one of the app builders like these. So I've, I've had a look at Good Barber and Appy Pie. I've actually never used Thunkable, but the problem with those, at least in my opinion, I'm, like I said, I've never used them, is that you don't own the code. Like if you ever needed to sell the application to somebody else, you couldn't because it's on their platform. However, I think those tools are really good to get started and to get a prototype out there. And if that continues working for you, if you have no intention of ever selling it or looking for investors or anything like that, I mean, that's, that's a good, I, I think, you know, keep doing it. It's working, keep doing it. You know, the, the, the goal is not the process. The goal is the, the final destination. You're producing what you want to produce and that's exactly what that's exactly what you should be doing. I mean, it's, there's nothing else to do, really, is there? I have a lot of clients that come to me who say, uh, you know, they were working with an app developer, and the app developer app developer won't give them the code for whatever reason, and it always turns out that there's an app builder involved, like they're using something like business objects or something like that, and that's one of the reasons why they decide they're going to leave that app developer and come back and work with me. And it's not the app developer's fault; it's just that they're they're trying to produce something at the the lowest cost they can for their clients, so they use one of these tools. But it's that inflexibility of them that makes it so they can't do certain things, they can't do custom components. So that's one of the reasons why I like doing custom development. It's just because you have that total portability. You could take the code and move wherever you want to do with it. And um, you know, but like I said, if it's working, it's working. If you don't plan on selling it, you're fine. And even if you did, if you made so much money that somebody wanted to buy it from you, like if it became huge and Google wanted to buy it, I'm sure you can hire a developer to just reskin it and then release it under the same thing. You might not have the same key store file for Android, but you can still do the same iOS version uh, using the, uh, you know, sign it with the same iOS certificate. So I hope that helps a little bit. I mean, if you're making money with it, keep doing it. You know, there's no reason to stop. You know, I, the only things I would be afraid of is if you needed to sell it on or if the company went out of business, if, if Thunkable went out of business or the other one went out of business, then, you know, what would that leave you? Would you still have the app on the app market if there's no back end for it to go to? Anyway, yes, uh, my thoughts on that. Let me know what you guys think. You guys might disagree with me. Anyway, that is it for today. I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow. Mm -hmm.